Men occasionally stumble upon the truth, but most pick themselves up and hurry off as if nothing had ever happened. Winston Churchill. If this has ever happened to you when someone tells you the truth, congratulations, you're on the side of the majority. And since you are on the side of the majority, you probably think you're right. And if this happens to you when you're out telling someone the truth, congratulations, you're on the hero's journey. And you just found someone else who's not ready for the truth. It's part of the problem that's on the hero's journey, but remember, it's an ungrateful task to tell people to go back down in Plato's cave and look into the light. And that's why we have to bravely face all of these disappointments which we're sure to experience on the hero's journey. And we, we, and we gotta care not for any personal discomfort this message might bring us because we realize in our hearts that this is no mere sentimental pseudo-religiosity. We're talking about returning to paradise. We're talking about eliminating most of the suffering on this planet. This is a tremendous, glorious journey we are on. And part of this journey is when people run from the truth. They're just not ready for the truth. Unfortunately, that's the vast majority of the people on this planet. So if you're out on the hero's journey and you're trying to share the message to strangers, for example, You've got to expect the percentages and not be discouraged when people run away from you. And I had some guy doing it yesterday. <laughs> and uh, I always like to find out what they do, especially if they're retired. Oh, what did you do? Let a uh, chemical engineer, oh, <laughs> you know, that tells me a lot. If you like what you do or what you did as an engineer, then you're going to be skeptical. <laughs> and I. Explained all that to this guy, and I went through the whole thing, talking about my good friend my Bob Wood, and how he was an engineer, and how he found this test, and all that stuff, and and uh, and I said, hey, you know, it, it, I, I like talking to you guys because you'll understand my schematic, and I explained that, and it went right over his head. So he's maybe 10, 20 years older than I am. Uh, hard to tell for sure how old he was because he did he looked really bad. Um, uh, but anyway, you can tell his mental faculties weren't really that sharp. Uh, he should have figured he should have been able to follow my schematic. Because he's an engineer. Come on, man. If you can't follow a, a, a simple six-box system uh, the way I explain it, then your brain's just not firing all the cylinders. But anyway, uh, you know, I said, you know, I, I always enjoy talking to engineers because they can understand my schematic, and and I know that they're skeptical. But if I can convince them, they're going to be the best at doing what they need to do because they're a perfectionist. And he goes, Oh, I'm not skeptical. Blah 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 blah. And he went on and on and on. <laughs> And sure enough, he, he, he was true to his colors. He was, must have been a good engineer. <laughs> and sure enough, when I finally said something he didn't like, he just started pedaling real fast. And of course, I think of that all the time, and I think of that quote by Winston Churchill too often. Most people stumble off, stumble off and hurry off as if nothing had ever happened. You remember, people shut off their frontal lobe. You can almost see the brain working. I even said to the guy, come on, man, you're supposed to be a smart guy and engineer. You can't put two and two together. <laughs> you know, your brain isn't working, my friend, because you're smart enough to understand what I just told you. And boy, he just bolted out of there. But that's what happens. The hero's journey is a lot of fun because, sure, you're going to have these ungrateful people who are going to be mad at you because you tried to get them to look into the light. But gosh almighty, when you find someone who's in need of this information, it makes all of it worthwhile. And I even said this a long time ago. I haven't said it in a while, but... I realized I piss a lot of people off in the process of doing that. And out of 100 people I talk to, most people are nice and they'll hear me out. Most still run off and pay no attention. Quite a few get pissed off. But if I can save one person's life out of those 100, screw the hell out of you, you got pissed off. I just saved someone's life. Not to mention how many lives, animals' lives, that person's going to save. Now, this is sort of an epiphany I had the other day. That's why I, I cut my video off short I wanted to tell other stories and I didn't get around to it in the first video because I realized hey there's a chance to pay back all the animals I ate and were responsible for killing as a co-conspirator realizing that number is very high and that is by helping other people realize they're making a mistake and get them to stop then the amount of animals that they're not going to eat because of you 
are the animals that you saved and you can save more animals than you've ever, ever, ever eaten or killed in your life. When you join the hero's journey and you get people to realize the mistake it is to eat the animals, to eat the grains, to cook your food, that's the big one right there, my friends. It's a hard thing to wake up to. And you might save that to the very end. In fact, for the longest time, when I would tell this message, I knew that if I told people too much too soon, they tuned out too quickly. So I was very vague about how I explained things. To understand what I mean by that, watch the Ultimate Solution 11 part video series where I didn't, you didn't know, I was even talking about raw food or fasting for the longest time. I wouldn't refer to what it was because I knew it would shut their frontal lobe off. I wanted people to see the logic of what I was saying and how they should stay tuned to find out, well, what exactly am I talking about? In other words, I basically created, with my special teaching tool, uh, the ultimate uh, parable using numbers and a teaching tool. So I could tell my whole story and talk about piece 95 or piece 46 or piece 3, and no one's going to know, oh, that's the thing that I don't want to hear. But I see the logic of what you're saying, and if I can agree with what you say, then it's a done deal. Because every piece of this puzzle connects logically. But then when it comes to the specifics, I guarantee you, there's only one way to win that argument, that battle, and that is to get people to test an idea as time has come. Tell them, when you do it, I guarantee you, you're in for a treat.